Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, so um, I'm presenting uh, today BetaML, a machine, another machine learning toolkit. Uh, I have put a link uh, to the slides on GitHub, on the README. So if you follow the QR code or you just Google BetaML uh, uh, Julia uh, on GitHub, you have the, the PDF. So, uh, you know, there are already a lot of uh, machine learning uh, framework in Julia. Some are about specific uh, uh, algorithms. Some are to put them together in a common API. So the question is, of course, why yet another <laughs> machine learning uh, toolkit? Well, the point is that we try to go the opposite uh, we direction than, uh, than mainstream by putting everything together in a single package. So in a single package, we have uh, the algorithm and uh, the uh, the tools to work with this algorithm and this allows us to go even more uh, uh, simple from the point of view of the users so the idea here is again not to uh, have something computationally efficient uh, but uh, the trade-off is to have something really, really simple for the users and convenient to use. And uh, the fact that it's all in one single package, uh, uh, of course, help us to keep, uh, as you can see, a very simple API where you have your uh, uh, model and then uh, uh, you, I'm trying to get how I get the, the, the okay. You get your model with optional hyperparameters uh, and uh, uh, you fit, you predict, uh, uh, and eventually you inverse predict and query your models. Uh, I would like to stress here that they are optional, they per parameter, a little bit like uh, the presentation we, we had earlier, uh, but uh, uh, it's just not a default, but there is an heuristic behind that is based on the data structure of your data, the size and the, and the kind of data that you are feeding the model with. So we try to, to adjust the, uh, the per parameter like that. If you want to really them to uh, be really adapted to your data, uh, we can also have uh, auto-tune too. That's just what you have to do and you run out run a uh, auto tuning method uh, based on uh, cross validations and you can choose your strategy or use the default one uh, that is there so uh, really really uh, a simple way to to explore uh, your, uh, your 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 models so we're, currently we have um, three based uh, algorithms uh, in decision tree random forest neural network algorithm uh, mixture model using expectation maximizations uh, uh, with clustering, missing data imputation, data reductions. And on the side of this algorithm, we have uh, the tools to work with this algorithm. So uh, partitioning, uh, scaling, encoding, everything you, you have in a typical uh, workflow in machine learning and uh, measure uh, uh, to, to understand the, the quality of your, of your model. So uh, of course uh, it's uh, uh, documented and uh, and tested, and uh, oh, it's not very computational efficient, uh, but that's again not the scope of the of this uh, this tool. It's really the idea that uh, different kind of 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 public that has, uh, for example, my my colleagues in economics, you often have hundreds or thousands or ten of thousands of data. You don't have uh, uh, necessarily big data to to analyze. Uh, so this is an example uh, with a neural uh, network. And here I put in this example, the layers has hyperparameters, but you don't have to, because if you omit this one, automatically found uh, uh, the layers uh, uh, dimension that is appropriate to your data. So I, I could have skipped all this one and just very simple run a neural network estimator and, and that's all uh, what you, you need to do. And uh, the trade-off between uh, uh, easy to use uh, convenience and the computational is even stronger with tree-based uh, uh, algorithms because uh, uh, our tree-based are slow compared with, with other implementations, but they work really with everything. They can ingest uh, uh, data that is not uh, um, that is not numerical, even missing data. You can see in this example, we are feeding the model with everything <laughs> and it uh, just works so you don't need to do pre-processing uh, or, or, or nothing else. Uh, here are some benchmarks. Uh, I leave the benchmark, you find them in the PDF online. What I would like to stress is that, okay, it's it's taking more time, it's taking more memory, it's not computationally efficient, but this is not a 
the in terms of errors is pretty on pair with uh, other uh, leading uh, uh, leading frameworks. So the, the idea is really, uh, is not the error that is sacrificed, it's not accuracy that is sacrificed, it's rather the, 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 the time, uh, the, the, the computational efficiency. Uh, here uh, we have some clustering. We have both uh, implemented, sorry, uh, hard and uh, soft uh, clustering, and we provide several metrics to. Uh, sorry, I went the one after. Okay, to judge the quality of the cluster, and uh, for me, imputation is interesting because. Uh, we have a, a, a wide range of uh, imputers from the simple one, uh, just they, they take the average to random forest. And we have even one uh, imputer that can be used for whatever uh, a, a model, uh, a machine learning model. So if you have a, a one machine learning model, not necessarily from BetML, but you want an estimator that you want to use, you can wrap it and use this general imputer model to input missing uh, data. Uh, if you have several, uh, uh, in a tabular data, if you have several column with missing data, you can also choose to have a record more than one passage to, to refine your uh, imputations. And uh, eventually, if you want to judge the uh, stochasticity of your output, you can have multiple imputation as, as output. Uh, here I put some uh, in the benchmark. You will find also with uh, uh, R and uh, and Python libraries. And uh, in this case, with R, not only the the the, the results are pretty good, but also computer. Well, we don't we know that R is not particularly fast, but uh, it's uh, pretty on pair with with it. Uh, yeah, we have uh, dimensionality reductions. Uh, we have a PCA encoder where you can uh, specify the variance that you are allowed to uh, to tolerate, uh, the unexplained variance, or you can use an uh, autoencoder. And for example, here is, I, for my knowledge, there aren't other library that make you so easy to run an autoencoder, because here you don't need to specify nothing. You don't need to specify your, uh, in, in your encoding or decoding layers. If you want, you can. As hyperparameter, you can specify your, your, your layers. But otherwise, you just give encoded size, uh, which is the output of your hidden space. And that's all. You run autoencoder. So very for someone that is not practical is, uh, I, I think it's very, very easy. And uh, in this example, you have uh, uh, that we reduce this matrix in one dimensions, and then we inverse predict, we get it back uh, uh, the, 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 the prediction. You can see here that it's pretty, it's pretty close to the original matrix. So uh, this is uh, one of the last things I added, the future importance. Uh, I stress that here is not to understand that one single predictions, what it causes the prediction, but to judge uh, overall your model, uh, uh, which are the, uh, the, the, on which variable, uh, on which dimension is uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, are more important and as for the missing imputator you can use it for whatever uh, model not necessarily from BetML and uh, you can see here an example so in this example I have uh, one uh, uh, I have three dimensions and then I have another one that is correlated with the first dimension and but then my y depend only for the first one and you can see uh, the results correctly the model I like that is the first dimension to be the most important and this is the one that is correlated to the first but doesn't influence y but give a very little uh, uh, little value little uh, results so I turn, I finish this uh, presentation with what I'm actually doing using this. Uh, I am the first user <laughs> of the machine learning library. And this is something uh, interesting because uh, uh, we are creating a hybrid machine learning model for uh, uh, Forest Go. So we are assuming that Forest Go uh, follow a logistic model. And we're interested to estimate the parameter of this model. So we have a sort of hybrid approach. Uh, and this is how the, the, the architecture of, of this model. So we have uh, uh, autoencoders here, and then here we have one branch of the model here, and uh, the volumes go here in the other branch uh, to find uh, the, the loss with uh, the observed the grow. And what we're interested in here is these two parameters here uh, that are the parameter of the logistic models. Uh, and uh, so I saw you are coming, I'm ending. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so this is uh, how really easy we implement. We have a dense layer, replicate or later grouped layer, the, again, dense replicate or group. And the last layer is without learnable parameters, but it's just the functions that the, we, wa we want to assume. And in this way, we have something really physically uh, enabled machine learning. And this is the result of a uh, effect of climate change on French forest. Thank you. Thank you.